What is up beautiful people? It's your girl Cam and I am back with another video. Today I'm coming at you with a DIY video. I'm going to be showing you how I created this little micro notes binder cover. This is one of the micro notes that I am considering using for the summer. This is the Princess Tiana themed one and I just created this cover from paper and I mentioned that in my first video about summer micro notes but I'm going to show you today how I created this uh, little binder cover and let me just show you real quickly how it works so it, it works like a traveler's notebook with the strap on it there you just take that off I did put the little knot in it right there see that right there and then your uh, micro notes just fits right into this little pocket in the back right here you just slide the micro notes in there and then you are good to go all right so I'm going to show you um, step by step how I made this cover and I'm going to make one today that is mermaid themed so if this is your first time visiting my channel welcome welcome to peace of the plans and if you uh, are new here I hope that you find some inspiration and that you will consider hitting that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you won't miss out on any of the fun right here on this channel. If you're already a part of the fam, welcome back. So if you want to see me create a mermaid themed micro notes binder cover, just stick around. Okay, so I'm going to be making the binder cover for this micro notes, which is also a DIY. I made this one from scratch as well. I flipped through it in my previous video, but it's got dividers in here that are laminated. It's got cardstock paper, um, and this came from a paper pad from Michaels. Okay, so let me go through first the list of things that you will need to complete this project. Let's start there. Okay, because you're going to need quite a few things, but I don't want anybody to be intimidated by this because it really is a lot of fun and it's pretty easy to put together. You just kind of have to um, go step by step. All right, so my desk is dirty because I do lots of crafts on here, so just ignore it because it's got glue and ink and stuff. Okay, so just ignore that. <laughs> All right, so the first thing you're going to need is a paper trimmer. Of your choice um, to cut your papers down to size so paper trimmer then you'll need a pair of scissors to trim things up bone folder this one I got from Michaels paintbrush or paint sponge both from Dollar Tree my podge also from Dollar Tree E6000 as the adhesive I got this from uh, Michaels corner rounder if you want your corners rounded, corner rounder. Elastic cord to make your um, little strap that will close your binder cover up. This came from Walmart. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I want to encourage you to do is um, make a template for yourself. The reason I say this is because I'm, I'm going to recommend two things that you make a template and that you do a like a dummy copy before you use up your real good uh, scrapbook paper that you want to create your cover from because there are little places where you can make mistakes or you didn't measure it properly or you know there's there's always a little room where you can make a mistake so I recommend that you make some templates for yourself and that you do 
like a little dummy copy or a little practice copy for yourself. I have one that I made out of this marble paper um, and I was thinking about using it but I'm probably not going to. This was just one that I was playing around with and I think this marble paper is absolutely beautiful but I don't have a micro notes that matches it so you know this was just my little practice. Okay so in terms of the template here is what you will need. You will need four you'll need three pieces of paper your scrapbook paper of choice cut down to four inches by five inches okay so four by five you'll need three of these next you will need one piece of paper cut down to five by six and a half one paper like this and then you will fold this page in at two and a half inches okay and you'll fold it in and you'll use your bone folder on that but the length is five by six and a half you'll need just one of these then you will need two pieces of paper cut down to two and three eighths by five now let me show you what those pages should be but you, you want to have this template so that if you decide that you want to do this again you don't have to figure out what the measurements are again it took me a long time y'all to come up with this measurement that would fit and that would be a spine that would be wide enough to fit these classic size discs because this is how I like for my micro notes to look I think they look so stinking cute with the classic size discs on them. So that's why I made the spine so big because I want these discs to fit. All right, so let me talk about what parts of your uh, binder cover these template pieces represent. Okay, so the first three pieces I mentioned were the four by five. So you need three of those. And here is what those pieces are going to be. You're going to have the outside cover. It's going to be four by five. The inside front cover is going to be four by five. And then the inside of the back cover, four by five. Let's go over that again. The outside front cover, the inside of the front cover, and the inside of the back cover. All three of these are the same size, four by five. Okay, then the five by six and a half is the back cover of your binder cover. It's the back. And this little folded piece is the pocket that your micro notes will slide into. And you're gonna glue all of this down and you'll still have enough room to slide your planner in there. Okay, and then last, the two and three eighths by five. You need two of those, and these will be the pieces that you will use for the spine. Okay? All right, so let's get to it. And we're going to start by putting um, the front cover together. And the first thing you want to do with the front cover is you want, if you want your corners rounded the way I have mine rounded, then you want to go ahead and round the covers before you start doing anything else. So I've rounded the corners of this one, so I'm going to round them again. So um, if you're new to crafting, follow me on this part. On the front cover, you want to only round the top right and the bottom right. Okay? That's what you want to do because this is this is going to be the cover of your book that you're going to open like that. We're going to set that aside. Now for the inside cover, we're going to um, make sure I'm holding it the right way. This is actually supposed to go this way. Okay, so for the inside cover, we're going to round the top left 
and the bottom left. Okay. This is going to be the inside. So now when we put this together, this is the outside cover and that's the inside. All right. Then, okay, and then for the inside back cover, you're going to also round the corners at the right top and bottom. The back outside cover that has the pocket on it, we're going to go ahead and you fold this in at two and a half inches. Remember I said that earlier, that you folded this pocket in two and a half inches. I'm looking for my template. Okay, it was six and a half across. You went in two and a half inches and you folded. So I'm going to do that now. I folded it here. We're going to take our bone folder and we're just going to crease it. So you get a nice, clean crease, okay? Then after you do that, you're going to round the corners of the right top and bottom with the pocket folded over, okay? There you go. Okay, now we are going to take the front cover and we're going to go ahead and glue this together and I'm going to use my E6000 for this. Now I um, caution you if you're new to use an E6000 mine is kind of temperamental sometimes it will come out nice and slow and sometimes it will come out in globs I think it just depends on the temperature of it that's just been my experience with it sometimes it comes out nice and calm and slow and other times it will just glob out so I would be careful with the E6000 when you start squeezing it out and it has like a little the glue has sealed over the top so I'm just pulling that off It's created this whole seal over the top of it. So I'm just removing that. Okay. All right, now this can come out kind of globby. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So I'm gonna put the E6000 all across the edge. Like right now, it's kind of coming out kind of globby, but that's fine. And the great thing, one of the great things about the E6000 is it is very, very, very forgiving in the beginning. Okay, so you can move this around until you get it. I'm going to put the top cover on the back cover now, but you can move this around until you get it where you want it. It's very forgiving in the beginning, but once it's stuck down, it's stuck. You would have to literally rip it apart to get it um, to come apart. Okay, so I'm just lining this up. And I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to trim up the little edges that aren't even. You know, even though you measure things precisely, they never come out exactly, exactly um, perfect. So I'm just going to trim this up. And then I'm going to set this aside and go to the back cover. Now for the back cover, I'm going to open up this little pocket that I've created. Okay, now I'm going to take this back inside cover and I'm going to adhere it right inside 
where this pocket is going to go. Just like that. So I'm going to take the E6000 again. And I'm going to lay that across. Okay, and now once I've got that down, I am going to put this inside of the back cover down. I'm going to line it up. just gently press it down okay then I'm going to take I still need to trim just a little bit Just a little hair there. And I got some of the glue oozing out, so I'm going to remove that. Okay, now I am going to glue this pocket closed. I'm going to take the E6000, just a smidgen of it, just a, a very small bead of it, and go around the very edge of the top and the bottom. I don't want to glue this side piece because this is where my planner is going to slide in. So I'm just going to close this and I'm going to press this down making sure that it's lined up and I just put, put glue across this top part and across the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to go back to our front cover and now I'm going to start attaching the spine. Okay, so once again, I want to use just a little bead of the E6000. And go just right along the edge of the left-hand side of this front cover. Then we're going to take the spine and we're just going to barely overlap it just barely overlap that on top and then you can clean up whatever little glue spillage you have And then we're going to trim this up, but not right now. Okay, so we've got that um, first piece of the spine. You got to make sure you got it lined up straight. And like I said, this is so um, forgiving when you first start working with it. But once it's down, it's down. Let me see about how far have I gone over. Probably about a fourth of an inch. 
is what the overlap is here. Maybe not even that much. Maybe not even a fourth of an inch. Because I want to make sure that my classic size rings are going to fit on here. So a fourth of an inch might be saying too much. All right. Now we're going to do the back side as well. And we're going to put um, a little bead of glue here on the, the um, right side of the spine. Just a little bead of this glob. E6000 there. Make sure you get the tops and the corners because you don't want anything to start coming apart. And we're going to take this back inside back cover and just barely overlap it. Just like an eighth of an inch overlap. turn it over and you can see where you have any glue that has spilled out and you can make sure that it looks reasonably straight to you that looks good to me okay I'm just gonna clean up some of this glue now that you have that done you can take your scissors and just kind of trim up anywhere that might be a little bit too long. Just trim up the little excess. Because like I said, when even though you measure things, they don't always come out exactly precise. Now, we're going to take this last piece of paper and we're going to adhere it on the inside of the cover. And you want to try to line it up with the outside spine. Okay? But the E6000 will let you move it around a little bit in the beginning. Okay, so we're going to put some of this on the edge. And I'm also going to go on in the middle because we really want this to stick. You don't want any gaps in here. You don't want this to start coming apart on you. So you can even put some E6000 in the center because we're gonna layer this up. Okay, now we're gonna take this last piece And we're going to line it up with the outside spine. And if you have any oozing, just go ahead and clean that up now. And then I am going to make sure it's lined up with the top of the planner cover. I'm going to flip it over and make sure it's lined up on the back as well. Grab my scissors and do another little quick trim. Okay, now at this point, I am going to stop here because I need this E6000 to dry. Okay, so this project is going to take you, <clears throat> okay, so this project is going to take you a couple hours because you want this adhesive to dry really well before you start doing other things to it. Okay, so I am going to make sure everything is lined up. I've still got time to kind of wiggle things around and move them if I need to. And 
and I'm going to let this E6000 dry. Okay, but that's the basic foundation of Okay, but that's the basic foundation of your cover. You've got it made now, you've got it done. Everything is all trimmed down and I've got my corners rounded and I've got my spine attached. All right, so then and I've got my pocket made right here where my micro notes is going to fit in there. But what I want this to do is dry nice and solid before I do anything else to it. All right, so that was part one, and I will come back in just, uh, it'll be just a few seconds to you, but I'm going to probably let this dry for a few hours before I do anything else to it. Okay? So I think it's coming together nicely though. It's looking good. But you do have to make sure you catch some of that E6000 ooze. <laughs> the oozing as it comes out. But it's a very good adhesive so I do recommend using it. But you just have to clean up the oozing part. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry and then I will come back and we'll continue. Okay, I have let this dry for maybe about four hours. Um, I had some other things to do, so I went ahead and let it dry for a few hours, and now I am back. It's all nice and sturdy and glued together, and everything is good. I did check to make sure the pockets work. The pockets are good. So now I'm going to Mod Podge this, and this part is very, very simple. All you have to do is get yourself some Mod Podge, and I like to use the glossy kind, but it really doesn't matter. You can use whatever kind you want, glossy or matte, whichever one you prefer. And I'm just going to put a nice even coat on the front and the back of this cover. So I'm just going to squeeze some on. And this is really just like a way to kind of seal your, um, your planner cover all together. And I will say that if you want to add any type of embellishments on your planner cover, this is the time for you to do it. And I'm actually going to add something on here in just a second. But I'm just going to get some nice coverage on here. And it's going to look, if you've never used Mod Podge before, it's going to look very um, like white and milky. But that's what you want. That is what you want. It's going to dry, and it's going to dry nice and clear. Okay, so don't worry about it looking milky, and it's going to cover up the image. That's what you want. A good coating. And the reason that I'm doing this is because this is going to make my cover a lot more sturdy. Did I say that already? I may have. But the reason we do this is to make it sturdier. And it kind of gives it a almost like a faux leather feel when you finish. Okay, so now I have got this first coat on here. And you can do a couple of coats of Mod Podge if you would like to. I've always found that one coat is pretty much good enough though. But that's just my opinion. You want to make sure you don't leave too many streaks in it. Okay, now I'm going to add a sticker to the front. I found this sticker book. Um, this is by American Crafts. And it's got like unicorns and mermaids in it. And there was one sticker that said Mermazing. Okay, I like that. Now, because I added that sticker, I'm going to put just a little smidge more of the Mod Podge on top. Just a little smidge. There we go. Okay, now one little tip. Once you finish, of course you want to clean your brush. And when you finish, you want to lift it up. 
to make sure it doesn't stick to your table whatever surface you're working on just lift it up so it doesn't get stuck and then um, I'm going to do the same thing to the back side when this part dries I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and Mod Podge the back side but first I'm gonna go wash my brush out okay so I have given this first side time to dry and it looks really good it's got a nice little glossy finish on it and so now I'm gonna go ahead and Mod Podge the inside the inside cover of this planner binder again all I'm going to do is just put down some Mod Podge on here and I was sure to wash my brush out the last time that I used it so that my brush wouldn't get stiff on me and now all I have to do is go over all of this surface area with my Podge and put a nice little seal on the inside. All right, so I am going to let this dry and then we'll come back and put the finishing touches on it. Okay, y'all, I am back and we need to chat for a second because I made a mistake in that last clip um, if you saw the last clip and you saw I was using the Mod Podge and some of y'all who have used Mod Podge before probably were screaming at me when you saw me doing that, doing what I'm about to say, which is I painted all the way across. This is the inside of the binder cover and I painted all the way across with the Mod Podge over the pocket and you do not want to do that. That's common sense because this is a gluing agent as well as a coating agent, but I was rushing. I was moving too fast and I sealed up this pocket so I believe in um, transparency because we all make mistakes right we all make mistakes <clears throat> I'm not perfect y'all know that I'm just a human so I'm going to show you though how you can fix mistakes when you make them when you're crafting okay that's one of the reasons why I like to tell you when I make a mistake because I know that when you're at home sometimes you're gonna make a mistake and then you think that your entire project is ruined but it's not you can fix it okay so here's what I did when I went back and I realized though I had sealed this up I just took my little um, box cutter type device and just cut this pocket back open now the problem with that is that it didn't cut through the entire piece of paper it just cut through the top layer of it so that's making this back pocket rather fragile so now I need to reinforce it so it won't be um, super fragile this is already paper so it's not as sturdy as say leather or cloth but but I've made it more fragile by cutting this pocket back open and it didn't pull up all the paper I'm gonna see if I can show you here what happened so you see that white part in there can you see that that's the bottom layer of this paper that was supposed to come up but it did not okay so I'm going to so this part is real real thin okay this piece right here so I'm going to reinforce it with some more of the um, mermaid scrapbook paper so all is not lost we're still going to continue but the note here is do not seal that pocket up when you are putting your Mod Podge on. Don't do that, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna just cut this into a little strip. And you can certainly do this with a um, paper trimmer. I'm just gonna hand cut it though, with my scissors. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put this here, which is super cute, by the way. and I'm just gonna glue this down and then when I'm done with this video I'm gonna go back over and just Mod Podge this part I'm not gonna seal this pocket back up I'm just gonna come here and just brush it lightly 
Okay, so let me get my um, my E6000 back out. And we're just going to put some of this on here. I'm just going to line this up with the edge of that pocket and line it up with the top of the binder and then press it down. And I'm going to make sure that pocket is still opening up. Okay, then we're just going to trim this excess off. go back in here and make sure I don't need to add any more adhesive which I do and we're just going to press that down and remove any of the little globs that come out Okay, now we are going to go ahead and wrap this binder up. We're going to finish this um, DIY. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to attach the, um, the string, the strap, to this little binder. Let me show you what I mean. So the last thing we want to do is add this little string onto the front for you to open and close your binder. Okay, so I have this pack of cord from Walmart and it is not the thickest cord ever um, it's kind of thin so I do recommend if you can find cord from Walmart um, not from Walmart from Michaels or someplace else that has a wider elastic cord that you get that because this is just what I could find at the time and it's pretty thin but I'm going to use the pink because it's very cute and I think it matches the whole layout and so um, we're going to punch the hole here and then add the string. So what you want to do is just find the center point of your, um, of your spine. Okay, so I'm going to do it on the outside because I want to poke going in because a little bit of the paper is going to come through there and I don't want that on the outside of my binder. I want anything that's kind of slightly ragged looking to be on the inside. Okay, so I'm going to find what could be the center point. And you can measure this if you want to. I'm not a real measury person. I'm just going to eyeball it myself, but you can certainly measure it and find the exact middle point. But I'm just going to eyeball it for today. So I'm taking my awl and I'm just going to poke a hole through this paper. And I don't need to go too deep. Just get it all the way through there. And that's it. I'm just going to put a hole for your string to fit through. You probably can't see that, but it's there. Okay? And then, see it has that little bit of paper coming through there, but that's on the inside, so that really doesn't bother me. Alright, then we're going to measure how long we want this string to be. So we're going to go across the front of the cover and then we're going to double that. And that should give us the right amount of room for our strap.
and now all you have to do is take the, um, once you fold this in half, once you fold your string in half, you want to take the closed end of your string and put that through the hole that you just made with your awl. So you want to punch that, push that through. And you can use your awl to do that. Just push it on through. All right. Then you don't want to pull it all the way through because you still need to tie your knot. So you're going to make sure your two ends are even and then just tie a basic knot your string. Okay, and then once you get your knot tied, you don't want to make it too tight because you want to make sure that your planner is going to fit in there. So you get your planner, your little micro notes, slide them into your pocket in the back, close it up. And then stripe it closed. Ta-da! And there you have it, your very own Micro Notes binder cover. And this strap just goes on and off very easily. And then you can access your Micro Notes and you can easily slide your Micro Notes in and out of this binder if you want to take them out to plan, which is probably what I'm going to do. Take them out to plan and then you can just slide them back in this pocket. Let me show you one more thing before we go because, because this is paper, you know, it is more fragile than your um, regular leather or pleather or um, even the clear vinyl um, covers that you can get. It's a little bit more fragile. So I had an idea of if I'm going to take this with me on the go, I need to have something to put it in. So I decided that I'm going to put it in this little makeup bag that somebody gave me for either Christmas or my birthday last year. And it just slips right in here. And it just protects your planner from getting all tossed around in your purse. Okay, and this is just a little, let me measure it and see how because you might have one of these bags just laying around that you're not even using. So this is like seven inches by roughly five inches, which is the perfect size. So if you have one of these laying around, or if you can find one at the Dollar Tree or something like that, or Walmart, that you can just slip your planner in because this is paper and you don't want to just toss this in your purse and let this get all mangled up. Okay, so that's just a little tip for you. If you have one of these little bags, stick it in there. Then you can carry this in your purse, no problem. It won't get messed up inside this little bag. Okay? All right, so that's going to do it, y'all. This was so much fun to create this cover for my Mermaid Micro Notes. So, so cute. And I love doing DIYs because DIYs are just so... Um, crafty and just so fun and relaxing a great way to use up all that scrapbook paper we have right all those paper pads that we buy <laughs> how can we use all of those right so this was a great way to use one of those paper pads i think it turned out really good we have the strap on there the spine it fits perfectly everything is measured out perfect and um, the little micro notes is snug as a bug in a rug inside this little pocket
All right, so thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you will try this DIY yourself and that you will tag me on Instagram when you do so I can see how your projects turned out. All right, I hope that you are getting ready for some summer micro notes, and I hope that your week has been going great and that it's full of love, joy, and most of all, peace. I'll see you next time.